All right, hey, I'm Ryan Davis. Uh, I started working at Mervin Manufacturing in 1999, 2000. Uh, I was a finisher at the old Seattle factory at Fisherman's Terminal. Made snowboards for about two years, and then I became a CSR. And then after doing that for about six years, I um, became the Northwest rep. Super stoked, I'm gonna talk to you guys about my little collection here. This is a good historical kind of overview of uh, LibTech and GNU snowboards. Starting in about 1991, we've got a Doughboy Shredder here. Uh, we used to use surf geometries, so we call it a six foot seven. It's got a narrow waist width, a deep side cut. It's one of the first modern snowboards that actually had really deep side cut and you could carve. And this board's huge and became kind of a cult classic. Uh, it's got our famous textured top sheet and the skeleton graphic, and then old funny stuff that Mike Olson and Pete Starry probably made up. Little John Travolta there on the tail. Um, yeah, this thing's amazing, and it's a great piece of history. And uh, I think that even in this shortboard revolution, there's something to be said for a, a big long board with lots of effective edge and camber. We go into the grocer. Um, the grocer is another like great collector's item. Love how we were always funny with our marketing. We put skis on a snowboard, and uh, yeah, again, this became a, a cult classic. Red Van Dan gave me this board, and he introduced me to snowboarding at Mount Baker pretty much, so that's pretty special to me. Uh, that's a pretty epic one for sure. I was a smaller guy, and I like to ride powder. I grew up riding Mount Baker. And uh, this was my quiver killer. This is an Emma Peel, deep side cut, eight meter side cut, really lofty pow nose and tail. It's a great modern shape even. Had the corny platforms here and uh, I thought this is the ugliest graphic ever. Uh, and then now I think it's one of the dopest graphics ever. It's the, the old apple butt uh, ski graphic. That's the Emma Peel. I think I ended up riding this model for like eight seasons in a row kind of evolved over the years, but that was an epic one for a Northwest shredder. And then this is like the inspiring Matt Cummins. Uh, this is the bus uh, with the Rad Rick base. MC bus with the Rad Rick, and it's got some uh, secret surf sauce in there from the Mervin zone, and probably Matt and Temple and Mike chasing waves back in the day. Uh, Sean Donnell did the graphic for this. This is a super special model. It was really skate influenced, has a, um, a kink tip and tail, and it was really progressive. Lots of people were focusing on um, directional shapes back then, and uh, Mervin was doing skate focused um, twin tips. It's pretty epic. Uh, this board here is really special to me too. It's the inner course. So back in the day we were making, LibTech was making, you know, regular foot or goofy foot GS slalom boards because that was like part of the snowboard discipline. So great little carving machine. They're super rare. They're hard to find. So uh, I want to thank Matt Levins for scoring this for me. Thanks, Matt, of Northwest Snowboards. All right, so now we're going to get into some kind of tech history, graphic history. So you'll notice on all these boards prior, we actually had to screen print these graphics onto our um, uh, sub sheets or um, layup sheets and then, um, and then lay them up. It's kind of a toxic process and we're always looking for the next way to print graphics in a, in a more eco-friendly way. So Mike Olson created Eco Sublimation and this is actually Jamie Lynn's board when it was in prototype phase. Um, it was a sublimation test on an old uh, MC model and we did it. And so that really made the evolution from a screen printing to being able to sublimate on the top sheet. So then we could do photographs, pictures, paintings, watercolor paintings and apply that to um, top sheets. So here's the very first prototype. And this was going to be Jamie Lynn's first pro model that was screen print as an octopus. So some protos got made and then the sublimation process was developed by Mike. They stopped production on this model and created the famous 
Jamie Lynn Whale. And so here's Jamie's first pro model with LibTech, I think from 92 or 93, with a sublimated top sheet, watercolor painting by Jamie, sublimated onto a top sheet that really changed the game for us. Like, we all of a sudden had the prettiest, coolest boards on the market, and it allowed us to do anything we wanted from oil paints to, to photographs or whatever. And it was eco-friendly. We were able to use soy-based inks, water-based inks to get that um, rich saturation, which is kind of a game changer. Um, at one point, we kind of lost uh, GNU as a brand, and that's why LibTech got started up, or one of the reasons. And um, with the success of LibTech, we were actually able to acquire the GNU brand name back, and we were starting to do cap construction boards and focus on local shredders. This is a, a Jason Bass Pro model. Uh, everyone at Baker back in the day seemed to ride these. Um, he had a 53 and I think a 170. It was like you could have your big gun and your kind of your jib board. Um, so these are iconic Baker Northwest shredder boards for GNU. And also supporting the likes of Temple Cummins. Temple was Matt's youngest brother and a super ripper. Um, real surf style, and so he's always putting waves and stuff on his board, but stiff, camber-focused boards, cap construction, um, also kind of a, a Northwest Icon model to, to buy. And then all the way into the first Magna Traction model. So this is the first Mag prototype where we started doing serrated edges. We were able to start doing that because we went from making die punches um, for our, our core parts and um, our shapes to being able to use a CNC machine and like micro tweak. And so we could really experiment and try all kinds of different things. We had a CNC milling machine at that point and we were able to like make a dozen different prototypes of different things, try different um, edges, try different tail widths, different nose widths, different stiffnesses. And it really was a huge part of the future of Mervin. So this is uh, a great retrospect of Mervyn and Lip Tech snowboards.